not acknowledge that I have come and I live under the yoke of the devil. I don't want to live. I don't want to live under the subjugation of the kingdom of darkness. I believe in power. I'm a creature of power. I was forged by power. I was created for power. I have been given power. If it will ever be, then it will be by power. Today, shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Today, God will, will activate something that is dominant in your life. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. All that God intended to give us is encapsulated in the spirit that he has already given unto us. So something from within you will rise up to the occasion this night in the name of Jesus. In a moment of time, I'd like you to monopolize God in a brief prayer and make demands on heaven that, that today, today, this night will be that night you've been waiting for in the name of Jesus. Can you monopolize God? Monopolize God. Make demands on heaven. Make demands on heaven. Make demands on heaven. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Moselia Campres Cuve Sasala Mantali Coberatua Minzo Seco Bresco Fetamin Turia Cabale Moseke. We ask of oh God that you take the right of way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we ask that your tangible presence will be sustained throughout this time. And out of your presence you will manifest your grace and activate your people to operate in their highest potential even by your spirit in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus name you may be seated turn your Bible to the book of Numbers the book of Numbers chapter 11 we'll do a short reading then we'll take another scripture from the book of John then we'll begin our journey. We'll do a teaching for a few minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Then we'll go for practical. Do teaching, then we'll do the practical session. Hallelujah. Numbers 11, verse 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Midad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Midad, 
do prophesy in the camp and Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses one of his young men answered and said my Lord Moses forbid them verse 29 is my emphasis and the exhortation I have today is I titled it the desire of Moses you'll find that desire in verse 29 can we read 29 together as a congregation and Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. When Moses came out with the children of Israel from the land of bondage, in order for him to begin to establish a justice system, he had to function in the capacity of the judge to hear. And it was a very frustrating situation because from morning till evening, Moses will be judging cases. And his father-in-law decided to counsel him. And what his father-in-law recommended to him was this division of labor. And this work is so great it will be needful for you to get some lieutenants, some functionaries that will stand with you in the execution of this task. If not, you will weary yourself and you will also weary the people. Hallelujah. Now, that seems like a wise counsel. But it came to pass when God was addressing that issue, the policy he approved was not division of labor. The policy he approved was sonship. And he recommended that seven peop 70 people be brought to the tabernacle. And then he would show up in the cloud and take off the spirit that was upon Moses and put the same spirit upon the 70 elders. It's not division of labor, it's division of Moses. The same spirit that was upon Moses was going to be functioning on 70 other people. So if... if one, one guy is confronted with a case. He will do what Moses would have done under the influence of the, most, the spirit that Moses carried. So that was the policy that God implemented. And it came to pass on the day of coronation that the Lord came as he promised that he would, he would so do. But it came to pass that there were two men in the camp. And when God came, because there's no distance in the spirit, uh, the two men also came under the impartation that God was administering. Uh, uh, the problem, are you, are you with me? Uh, the, 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 the guys that were on ground felt there was a violation and someone came to bring a report to Moses to reveal to him how that. There were two of the guys that missed the appointment but they are there in the camp prophesying and Joshua, the son of Nun, who was one of the young men with Moses, now told Moses, stop them. You see, anytime there's a revival, God begins to do things that are not consistent with the expectations of men. You'll find that voice, that voice that came through Joshua, stop them. When something begins to take place, uh, that is not what we are used to. You know, when we flow with God, many times we put him in a box. And we say that God cannot function this way, God cannot function that way God cannot do this God I've seen someone before came for a meeting like this wasn't born again and he started speaking in tongues so at what point hallelujah at what point did salvation come to him he just started speaking in tongues that day and then became a preacher the next week and he's still a preacher till today 16 years later didn't backslide and the reaction took place in such a way that you will even misjudge the experience. Hallelujah. So that was what was about to happen. And it afforded Moses to be able to speak his mind. So we were able to peep into the heart that Moses had. When it was as though the people that were asking him to stop the other ones from prophesying. It was as if there were trying to bring some form of order 
They were trying to bring an administration to the move of God. Hallelujah. Anytime God begins something sovereignly, you will need to find the code for the administration in the spirit, not in the natural. There is always a temptation for us to bring our learning in the area of administration into the administration of spiritual things, just like they wanted to do. But such an introduction has the capacity to kill that which is manifesting. And Moses now said, if I were to speak on a day like this, if, if my opinion is needed at all, I would ask God to make all his people prophets. That you would not just be these 70 elders. If I was given room to suggest when the great monarch was issuing the commands and the instructions as to what he intends to do to reduce the burden, I would have asked him to make all his people prophets and that he will put what? His spirit upon them. I hope you know the prophets in this context is not the office but a prophetic people that can operate by inspiration and tap into the frequency of the mind of God. Do you still remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalms? Because in the book of Psalms, the people of God were called prophets, not because all of them functioned in the office. He said, touch not what? My anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. What God had in mind for which Moses that had peeped into some of his secrets was that a day will come where every believer in the Lord will become proficient in the use of the navigating system, even the Holy Ghost, such that um, accuracy and precision will become the, 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 the description of the quality of life that we live. And it came to pass, uh, Moses' desire registered in heaven. And God fulfilled the desire of Moses in the New Testament economy. He made provision for every believer to have a measure of the Spirit of God operational in his life. I'd like us to pick a scripture quickly, 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 quickly. I, I, uh, if you are still with me, say amen. amen. John chapter 3, we see the fulfillment of of the desire of Moses in the church. And so it will be needful for us to understand the full import of the desire that Moses had, which is already fulfilled in this dispensation, so that we can live in the full capacity of that desire. We can function adequately in the full implementation of the desire of Moses. In the book of John chapter 3, please turn quickly, turn quickly. John chapter 3, beginning from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The uh, John chapter 3 begins on a very thunderous note. The uh, there's a robust introduction uh, that we see in the book of John chapter 3 because uh, the Bible says there was a man Nicodemus could be considered first of all he's a man hallelujah secondly he's a Pharisee thirdly he's a Jew fourthly he's a ruler fifthly is Nicodemus. So we can consider him. Are you? <laughs> we can consider him on five levels. Are you with me? 
That's too much introduction. It's too boisterous. But according to Jesus, it, okay, this guy, his CV is large. But you see, when Jesus was addressing Nicodemus, there was only one way Jesus could address him. Are you with me? Je Jesus addressed Nicodemus, the man. Not Nicodemus, the Pharisee. Not Nicodemus, you understand where I'm going? And then Jesus makes a strange statement. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm. You know what Jesus meant? You were not born where? And as long <laughs> as, <laughs> as long as you have this defect, you are totally cut off from a civilization. This civilization is responsible for the cause of things upon the face of the earth. <laughs> this civilization is what will determine how this age ends. And you are cut off from that whole island just because you have a challenge with the way you were born. That's what Jesus said. Now, so this man being an intellectual probably studied in Oxford, in Harvard. He now wanted to make Jesus explain what he meant. And he, he said, well, what are you talking about? Is it that I should go back into my mother's womb and be born? Because the only kind of birth process that Nicodemus knew was that which will come by a woman. And uh, Jesus said, unfortunately, even if you succeed in getting back to your mother's womb and you are born, you will still be flesh. <laughs> For that which is what? Born of flesh is flesh. But what we are talking about here is a bet that comes by the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, it was in John chapter 3 that Jesus himself attempted to define what it means to be born again. He didn't, instead of defining it, he gave us an illustration of it. But I will not stumble upon that. Uh, it's, it's not within the scope of this lecture. Hallelujah. My emphasis is on the word see. Except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom of God. The vast island, the vast possibilities of the kingdom of God is not accessible until a man becomes born again. And the organic implication of being born again is that your spirit is enliving, your spirit is regenerated and the Holy Spirit begins to tabernacle your spirit. It gives your spirit life. The implication of this organic reality is first of all uh, you will now have the capacity through the spirit that tabernacles you to be able to perceive the word see there are you with me? The word see there means to perceive by the use of senses. And so when the Holy Ghost came upon your heart, he activated your receptacle. I will explain what I mean by that. I hope you know when you were in your mother's womb and you were nine months old in your mother's womb, you had developed eyes. Is that true? Your ears were developed. Your lungs developed your feet developed but unfortunately those parts of your body were not designed for the womb you will have to be born first before your eyes become relevant is that true you will have to be born first before your ears become relevant so jesus is saying you will need to be born first spiritually before your receptacle which is the organ that contains your four spiritual senses, will now be activated for function. The organic proof that you are born again is that your receptacle is active. That's what Jesus said. We are in the school of prophets. This evening, it's a school, the school of prophets. Because the desire of Moses must be fulfilled to the letter. I wish that all the Lord's children were prophets. And that what? He will 
put his spirit upon them. Let us examine your receptacle. The organ with four senses. First spiritual sense. John chapter 13 verse 1 to 3. First spiritual sense. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. First thing to underline. Please go back, please. Underline knew. Jesus did what? Knew. All right, go on. That his hour had come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And Jesus, knowing, underline that, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. There are three knowings here. Jesus knowing, number one, the Father has given all things into his hands. Jesus knowing that he was come from God. Number three, Jesus knowing that he went to God. First spiritual sense is called the knowing of revelation. Is that knowing that you know that you don't know how you know, but you yet know? It's a revelation. The knowing of revelation. This is the strongest sense on your receptacle. 70% of the communications of God. Oh, 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 you are not with me. You are not with me. You are not with me. Now, listen to me. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. I, I can't repeat myself. We are not talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Too. We are talking about, we are not saying, do you have the gift of the Spirit? No. We are saying, do you have the Spirit? If you have the spirit, this is your portion. I wish that all the Lord's children were prophets and that he would put what? He didn't say gift of the... He put his... So, understand that. Please help me preach to your neighbor quickly. We are not talking about the gift of the spirit. We are talking about the presence of the spirit. The knowing of revelation is your first spiritual sense. 70% of God's dealings will come through that platform. It is, it is, are you with me? It's a no, it's part of what we call God's non-cognitive communication. And if you are going to be an accurate prophet, you must perfect the non-cognitive communication first before you can now walk in the cognitive communication. You must know how God communicates to you and leaves your mind at home. And you can follow with your heart until your heart becomes the organ that is ahead of your thinking, your mind. That's what makes a spiritual man. There's a shift that will take place that will put God's operation in your heart ahead of your mind. So when you have heard God, that you cannot strategize. Don't start strategizing anything if you have not heard God. That which is born of what? The flesh is. You remember that? Do you know that many times the difference between life and death is a knowing? You need to know when to sit, when to stand, when to walk away and when to run. You need to know when to board a flight and when to allow the flight to go. Even though you have a valid ticket on business class. The knowing of revelation. Many times my life has been spared just by a knowing and it's something that you can readily despise because it's not a knowing that is 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 is, is apprehensive it's a quiet knowing uh, it's a very quiet knowing and then you now find out that the streams of the spirit many times they are on their own quiet cool mode powerful things powerful signs in the spirit you still remember that elijah's prayer on on camel the effect of the prayer was appearing in the canvas of the sky. And when the servant came the seventh time, he saw an insignificant cloud that looked like the hand of a man. So insignificant, something you can despise. <laughs> but Elijah said, that is the sign that proves that what? There is going to be an abundance of rain. 
something very big in physical manifestation will appear in the spirit like a feather. And if you don't understand the language of the spirit, you will despise it. It said the things of the kingdom look weak, but there, that's how power administers its protocol. I tell you today, uh, your, your, your spirit, your senses will come alive in the name of Jesus. Many times when you are going through persecution, you will not even understand what is happening without a knowing. If you know, or like for Paul, he said, because of these things I have suffered many afflictions, but I know, I what? I know whom I believed so his suffering could not bend his mind. The devil is in the business of mind bending. To bring you to a point where you disbelieve the things you believe. Just because there is a little pressure. You, you can disbelieve if there is no knowing. But a man that knows is so terrible, so difficult for the devil to deal with. Because when you give him 39 strokes of the cane. He will say behold I make all things new. Knowing of revelation. Please help me ask your neighbor what do you know? Number two, John chapter five. Let's begin from 20, please. Media man. For the father loveth the son and showed him all things that himself doeth. Can you underline show it? Show it. And this showing is a manifestation of what? Of the father's love. So we call this sense the sight of affection. First is the knowing of revelation. Second is what? The sight of affection. Uh, 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 next verse, quickly. Next verse, quickly. And he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel. Underline show. Have you read the scripture that says, call unto me and I will answer you? Uh, so it means that what I just want you to do is to call. I will give you the answer for which you call you. But in addition to that, I will do something that you did not ask for. I will, I will show you I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Lawi, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk, that's your walk, that's your job. But your calling is your walk.